It gives me great pleasure to invite our next speaker, Athanasia Iosafidou, to come forward. Athanasia is a, an ambassador for the Love of Languages initiative, um, organised by the Office of Multicultural Interest. Athanasia has a rich background in languages that has led her on a journey involving different cultures at home and overseas. Yasas, que calusitate. Bonjour et bienvenue. Boa tarde e sejam bem-vindos. Hello and welcome. My name is Athanasia and I was asked to speak to you about my language journey until now. So sit back, relax and welcome to my reality. 18th of January 2003. Stress, excitement, restlessness, joy, confusion, accomplishment. The day that my family and I left our place in Greece to enter this place, Perth, Western Australia, a dot on the world's sphere, the most isolated city in the world, a decision driven by my parents' passion to teach the Greek language abroad and the curiosity to explore. I remember my first days of school in year eight. It is one thing learning English as a foreign language and a complete other finding yourself in a country where the spoken language is English. Maybe it had something to do with the Australian accent. Or maybe with the fact that I was just 13 and completely outside my comfort zone. One thing is for sure. In that moment, I hated that I could not express myself to my new friends. I hated that I even had to make new friends with a completely different culture to mine. I hated that no one could pronounce my name properly. But at the same time, I loved that I was here, here in Perth, here making Australian friends, here expressing myself in English. Eventually, stress and confusion gave way to excitement and accomplishment. I finished year 12 in 2007, achieving a score of 96.7, and I wanted to work with people the people of Australia, the people whose language I now spoke, the people who I now even shared some culture with. I completed a Bachelor of Arts in Psychology in 2010. I chose psychology to help those around me, but I could not deny what was already in my DNA. English was now my second language. There was no challenge. It seemed like it was too easy compared to the previous years. People even started telling me I had an Australian accent. Was it possible? I was back in my comfort zone. I needed to learn another language. So, I enrolled myself in first year French at university and I immersed myself into everything French. I filled my room with French movies and books. All the people close to me knew what to buy me for my birthday or Christmas, something French. But it was not enough. I knew firsthand that learning a language outside the country is not as rewarding or scary as when you do it there. I completed a graduate diploma in education in languages other than English, Greek and French in 2011 and I started teaching Greek full time. But I spent much of my energy dreaming about living in France and speaking French like the French. And you guessed it, I found something to make it happen. I found the opportunity to leave my now second home, Perth, and move to France. I completed a certificate in teaching English to speakers of other languages in 2014, and I applied to work as an English language assistant for seven months. 12th of September, 2014. Stress, excitement, restlessness, joy, confusion, accomplishment, again. Here I was on the plane to Paris, half wondering if I was playing crazy for leaving Australia or for not having done it sooner. It felt surreal. Was it really me, the 13-year-old girl from Greece, who could now speak English? Was it me that was really going to teach English to others? But it was just yesterday that I arrived. What if they found out I wasn't really an Australian local? I would lose all my credibility as an English teacher. But you see, this is a funny thing about languages. We pressure ourselves to speak like the locals. We think that everyone around us heard the preposition we missed, or that they are definitely struggling with our accent. But here is what I learned. I felt mesmerized every time I heard a new accent from a classmate in university. 
Every inch of me felt proud every time one of my students learned a new phrase in my English class. I envied people who could speak more than one language. So, I chose to believe that people around me were doing the same when they heard me speak. I embraced my almost gone Greek accent and felt nostalgic for the challenges I faced in learning languages. So there, on that plane, on the 12th of September 2014, I decided that I would just land in France and do it. There was no time to waste. I had done this before and I knew how to do it this time. I wasn't 13 years old anymore. I was a fully grown up 24 year old. But here's the other thing about languages. It doesn't matter how old you are, how many times you've done it before, or how determined you feel. It can be so scary, so intimidating, so frustrating. But believe me, it is also so rewarding, so amazing, so eye-opening. I can stand here and tell you that it is easy and fun all the time, but I'm not going to lie. You probably know it. It is hard, but so worth it. It was for these reasons that I stayed in France, I learned French, and I came back to Australia, determined to learn Spanish or Italian or something else. 8th of June. 2015, stress, excitement, restlessness, joy, confusion, accomplishment, once again. I was in Perth and back at work teaching English to adults. I was surrounded by a group of energetic and joy infectious Brazilian students. For those of you who are lucky to have been in this position before, you will know the mesmerizing effect of their attitude to life and their language, Portuguese. Something inside me went off again. I needed to learn this language. What better way to continue my language journey than to make friends at the same time as learning it? And here I am with tickets to go to Brazil in a few months for a holiday, but I'm looking forward to getting a chance to use what I've learned. And a part of me keeps thinking Spanish will definitely be easier after Portuguese. 1st of November, 2016, today, stress, excitement, honor. I ask myself once again, is it really me, the 13-year-old girl from Greece, who is speaking to you about learning languages in English? Yes, it is me. And you can do the same too. You can learn a new language. You can go to that other country. Or not, if you don't want to. You can make new friends from another culture. You can communicate with gestures and later with words. You too can take up that language that you've always wanted to learn. You can take your children to Saturday school to maintain their cultural heritage. You can learn a new language and maintain it in your home too. Who knows where that language can take you? It has taken me from Greece to Australia, France, Brazil and counting. In the huge space of memories, Learning a language has only good ones. When the stress and fatigue from our efforts become distant memories, we feel the warmth of our accomplishment. I wonder, how many times in our lives do we ignore parts of our life because all we're looking at is forward to the future? How many times do we not pay attention to the now, to every moment, just because we are focusing on our dream, the long-term goal, the success ahead of us? Do we stop and think, and then what? How many times have you told yourself that you will learn a new language next year? I say do it now. Set sail for a new environment, something unknown, something new, something unexplored. Maintain your grandparents' language, or learn a new one. You have nothing to lose, except your old accent and mindset. Merci beaucoup, muito obrigada. Thank you very much.